In today's video, I'm going to speak to you guys about activating a representative on e-filing. Good day. My name is Heinrich Hubi. I'm the owner of SA Accounting Network. I've been in the accounting industry since about 2008. And um, over the years, we've picked up many, many tricks and tips when it comes to e-filing. Um, we've been having some challenges probably the last couple of months. But it's such strange one of their systems, the way that e-filing works. Um, in the past, it used to be quite straightforward. If you get a tax number, you would register for e-filing. As soon as you log into the profile, you'll be able to um, press a little button to activate your tax number on e-filing. And from there, you'll be able to access normally all your tax numbers now. They have changed something on the system where they say before you can get access to your e-filing profile, you first need to activate the representative. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter who you are, everybody's got to go through this process, unfortunately, before you can access your tax stuff. So I'm going to shoot up to my computer, quickly show you what the error looks like and how to fix it. I'm going to show you guys two ways today, quickly how to do it, the long way and the short way. But let's maybe get onto my computer, then I can share what it's about. Mm -hmm. So when you log into your e-filing profile, um, you would normally get a screen like this where it will give you a surname over there, obviously your ID number, then you've got these options over here to link your tax numbers um, to the X, to, to the e-filing profile. Then here, on the right hand side at the moment, there's got these little eyes where it says that you can't access it at the moment because the representative isn't activated. On the bigger screens, if you work with companies, um, you get a similar area that side and that looks like this. So you can see that with all the different tax types, all of them gives you that error to say that it is not available. So Sash released a thing on their website where they told us that um, from now on going forward, they first need to activate your representative before we can get access to any tax stops. I think for obvious reasons, so they can know who to contact if you don't end up paying your tax. They would know where to go to come to to come and corner you if, if you if you're for some reason you don't pay your tax. So they first want to make sure that they've got all your contact details up to date before they give you access to the system. So how that works in theory, they say that you need to go to the SASH website itself, which is if you go to the main page SASH.gov.zn, you'll see that in the middle here on the left hand side, there's a couple of buttons over there. You can see this one that says online services. You need to go to that screen over here. You can see over here's a couple of options. You can see the first one is to request your tax number, submit support and documents, submit the payment allocation, report estate agents, you see there's a little button that says register representative, but then you can check tax compliances and tax compliance verification. So if you go to this screen over here, this is the one that they recommend that you need to complete. So you see, you can see on that drop down it says request to set a, to be set as representative. Here you can see in what capacity you're doing it, whether you're the, the accounting officer or whether you're the public officer or the main partner, so it doesn't matter who you are, so may, most companies would select that one over there, you'd put in your, your details over there, the entity details, so if it's a company, you would obviously put the company's name in there, you can see over here, you would say whether there's a company trust or other, put in all the information over here, and then once you're done with that thing, you'll see that over here, there's a place over here where you can upload some supporting documents. So what you need to update, update normally is your, your ID document, proof of your bank details and your proof of the address. So those three things are the things that you normally have to update. It is, if it is for a company, then obviously the company's details as well. So the company registration number, and then if you're more than one director in the company, you would have to write a letter to say you guys are, um, are nominating to be the representative of the company. So that documents you would have to upload over there. Then <clears throat> once you submit this form, in theory, um, after that, the representative is supposed to be activated, after which you can get access to that SAR system. But the problem with this system at the moment is if we upload all the documents and we submit it through to SAR, then they say it can take up to 21 working days for them to activate it, so which means that if you register your e-filing profile and you upload your documents over here, then in a month's time we can only start phoning SAR to find out what the reason is why it's not activated. I've heard some of the guys are waiting for months and they still haven't done it. Mm. So the other way to do it, which is the shorter way of activating a representative. Mm. So the step that you need to take, and we did this about a week ago and it worked really well. Um, so you can see with the such booking system, this is where you have to be careful now, is you need to choose whether it's for an individual or whether it's for a company or a trust that you want to do. 
um, the appointment. So if it is for a company that you want to activate the representative, you press that button over there, and then you can see over here, there's a bit of a questionnaire. They want to ask you what do you want to do? Do you want to make an appointment or cancel the appointment? We're going to say that you want to make an appointment. And then here, you need to put in the information. So the representative information, so the representative company. So if that's your company name, we put it in there. If the representative name will be the name of the director, surname of the director, the ID number. Um, if you don't have a passport, then don't worry about that. And then um, at the bottom of here, the tax pay information. So this again would be um, probably the representative because you can say they're asking for names, name, surname, tax reference number, tax, tax payer, tax reference number, tax payer ID number, passport number. Again, the same thing. You put in all your contact details over there. Then you can see over here that they ask you two different types of ones. Normally, if you do, if you update the representative, um, choose the one that says telephonic. I've heard um, on quite a few groups and stuff that SARS don't always honor the video calls. So people sit and wait for SARS to contact them, but they never contact them. So then it just waste the time. So always choose the telephonic engagement. You can see up here, there's a reason category. Over here, you can see they don't give you a lot of options, but choose the one that says other. Then after that reason for uh, appointment, you can see over there it says updating of, of representative details. So that is what you would choose. And then after that, you would choose the province that you're in. And then obviously any branch, it doesn't matter because remember there's a telephonic one. After that, you would click the button that says check for appointment. I can't do it now because obviously we haven't completed the top part of the form. But then after that, they will give you a screen where you have to choose a date and a time. Um, that you want to make the appointment to see such and you have to be careful because once you submit that form they're going to give you a case number and unfortunately i know in the past they used to email those case numbers out but at the moment they're not sending those case numbers out so you need to write down that case number it's really important that you get the case number as soon as you've got the case number the date and the time that they're going to contact you you need to go back to the such website and then this time you're going to click on this button over here that says support Submit supporting documents and once you open this one up, you can see it gives you the option to upload the documents. That case number that they gave you when you made the booking, you're going to put it inside the block over there. Again, all your details over there and then at the bottom over here, you're going to select those documents. Again, like I say, your ID, proof of address, proof of banking details. If it's for a company, obviously the registration documents. If it's more than one director, then obviously a letter stating you guys are nominating to be the representative of the company. And what happens after that is then on that appointed time, uh, the SARS agent will phone you. Normally, if there's any documents missing, they would actually phone you before the appointment date or appointment time. They normally tend to phone sometimes on the day itself. So if there's any documents missing, they will phone you and say, listen, they're missing one document. Maybe the ID is something wrong or the address or something like that. And they will give you a chance to upload those documents again. Then as soon as they phone you, um, they normally ask for a couple of security questions, so they would maybe just confirm your ID number with you. They want to make sure that they've got the right email address and contact number addresses and stuff. And then the nice thing about that is the guy that from social phones who actually sits and updates the information on the phone while he's busy talking to you. So as soon as he presses the button, then the next day you will see that you will have access to your e-filing already. So the next day when you log into your system, normally we get that little error message to say that um, and that um, this action that it says not available, you'll see there will appear a small tick box. So you're going to then tick the little box over there, obviously put in your tax number, and then at the bottom there will be a button that says activate. As soon as you hit the button, then you've got access to your e-filing. So those are the two ways. So the long way, like I say, is to do this uh, via the SASH website, but the short way is to actually make an appointment, get on the phone with the guys for SASH. They're normally super helpful. It's not a difficult process to go through. And then as soon as that is activated, then you can continue with your e-filing. I hope that that, that helped. Um, if you guys have any other tips or feedback, then please comment on the video as well. And um, yeah, I think it's a nice way that we can help each other. Cool. Thanks for watching.